الله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربي شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج عليه السلام اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم ونعنا عليهم أجمعين Respected viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. In our previous clip, we broke off in the hope of looking at the following verses of Du'ai Ahad, whereby we say, Ya Hayyan qabla kulli hay, O He who has always been alive before the existence of all living things, Wa Ya Hayyan ba'da kulli hay, and O oh, He who shall be alive after the extinction of all living things. Waya Hayyan Hina La Hay. And O oh, He who has been always alive even when there was nothing else alive. Now these these three statements go back to the same statement that we said, Ya Hayu, Ya Kayu, and how we prove that Allah was always there from the beginning of time. Is there and he will continue to be there and he is ever living nothing can make allah die now we can further explain this statement when we look into the next verses whereby we say ya al mawta wa mumit al ahya oh he who revives the dead ones and causes the living ones to die ya hayyu la ilaha illa ant Oh, ever living, there is no God save you. Now, in these verses, we are telling Allah, Oh, He who revives the dead ones and causes the living to die. This shows that life and death is solely in the hands of Allah. Nobody else can give you life. Nobody else can give you death. Now, a person may ask, in such a scenario, what about murder cases? So, what happens is, your time has been ordained. And when someone murders another person, it is not like that person was supposed to be dying at that point. No, the hand of Allah is not there. That person has committed a hideous sin because he could probably live for 5 more years, 10 more years, 20 more years after that. We don't know. But that person was murdered. And so that person is going to face his punishment. However, life and death is in the hands of Allah. There are many times we have seen, even in the annals of history, that the Imams have been poisoned, but yet they do not die. Imam Hassan Alayhi for instance, was not poisoned once. He was poisoned quite a few times before he finally did breathe his last. And so were the other Imams. Even Imam Musa Al-Qadim was poisoned so many times before. So everything happens in accordance to Allah's plan. Finally, he is the one who revives the dead ones and causes the living ones to die. And the next line that says, Ya Hayyu la ilaha illa ant, O ever living, there is no God save you. Here we are telling Allah, O oh Allah, you are the ever living. Now why are we stressing on life so much? Why are we stressing on Allah's attribute of being a high? The reason for this is to refute any claim or any allegation that we do not have a God or that God does not exist or that refutes the omnipresence of Allah. So we are saying a high so much because Allah is the one that ever existed and He is ever present, He is everywhere. And so in order to stress on that, high is being used so much that He, you cannot say that Allah has shut an eye. You cannot say that Allah does not know. He knows everything. He is ever living, ever present. And He is ever aware of everything we do. In fact, in Dua'i Al-Qama and in many other places we say Allah is nearer to us than our jugular vein. That means to say He knows each and everything, each and every thought, each and every action, even before we do it, Allah knows. Now at this point, someone will ask that if Allah knows everything, then why is He going to allot us into heaven and hell? Why did He even bring us to this world to suffer? Why would He just not allot us knowing in His knowledge that, okay, 
this person is sinful, so she's going to hell. This person is uh, is going to be doing good deeds in heaven in, in life, so why not put her into heaven? The reason for this is because Allah is just, and in His justice, He will not allot you to either heaven or hell depending on His knowledge, so that we do not get an opportunity to stand up and say, God, did you even give us a chance? So because we, we Allah knows that we are going to say, we are going to turn around and say, you did not give us a chance. And so that is why Allah sent us into this world as a huge examination hall, whereby through our trials and tribulations, we are being polished for our hereafter. We are being made stronger people. Like it says, you may never know the strength of a tea bag until it's full in hot water. So same way, we are now in hot water. And let's be the tea bags and show how strong we are. Let's come out with that color like we want the tea to catch color. And let's show that we can be on the path of truth. And we will not leave the path of truth. And so this is the reason why Allah brings us to this world. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ta gives you an opportunity to do good. And depending on your deeds, then he presents to you your scroll of deeds. And you see what you did. And then you can say, Had I not made such choices. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being the ever living, is always present and he always knows everything that we do. Join us for the next clip whereby we look into sending salutations and the importance of salutations to the man of our time. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله عادل لوليك الفرج عليه السلام